Well, today we've got um, tell him your name. Torrin Kell. Torrin, tell him what you're going to be when you leave sixth form. Uh, hopefully a firefighter. Firefighter, this dude. Um, he's had. Tell him how many lessons you've had. Fifteen, fifteen, twenty. You said twenty-two and a half hours driving. How many hours have you had with your dad? Five, maybe. No, uh, ten, maybe. About ten hours. He's quite a good standard. Um, how confident are you are passing? Uh, quite confident. He's really confident. This guy. T tell him how much you're going to win. Two hundred quid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, there we go, he's got 200 quid if he passes this mock test. If he drives like I've taught him to, he should pass easy. Um, tell him where you're off to tomorrow. Nah, South Africa. How long for? Two weeks. Two weeks, good. Now, if he drives like his sister, what do you, Olivia, when did she pass? For five years ago. Five years ago, right? I taught your sister Livy, she passed in 2015 in the month of July. She passed first time with three driver falls and she had an examiner was called Bob. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So if he drives like Olivia, respect to Olivia by the way. If he drives like her, he'll pass. Right, do you have any questions before we start? Nope. Sure? Yep. 38 to 40 minutes, young man. Um, we're going to take in various traffic road conditions, one manoeuvre you practice with the train, possibly the control stop, and you will be driving independently by way of certain other signs. Have you got that? Yep. Um, throughout the driver like you to follow the road ahead at all times, unless you're directed by signs and markings, or I'll ask you to turn which you will do, it's a good time to understand that one. Yep. One question before we start. Um, tell me how you check your brakes or work before starting the journey. So when you press down on the pedal, if the pedal feels slack or spongy, or if the car goes to one side, then they're not working properly. Well done. Well, I'm going to wish the very best of luck. Turn left out of here. And then left again. Minor fault number one, young Turin. Um, you swing wide here as you pull out of this junction. You, it's just your eyeballs. You should have been following the curb round. You weren't looking where the car wanted to go. Had there been a car or a motorbike come from your side and you caused them to slow down, then you would have picked the series fall up straight away. When it's safe to do so, could you show me how to put your dip headlights on? Thank you. on the left please. Thank you. Are you driving when you feel ready? Line of fault number two, Torrin. Um, you pull up too close to this junction on the right hand side. Now you know it's at least two and a half car lengths, ten meters from a junction. When you pull in, your signal came off. Um, you should have reapplied it because there's a car behind. But I haven't marked you for this because you were probably stopping. Um, but yeah, two and a half car lengths past that junction, Torren.
minor fault number three, Torin. Um, you are very lucky this wasn't a serious or a dangerous fault. Um, there was a car coming from your right. You, you'll see in the video when you pull out, you can see the car to your right. Had that car been breaking the speed limit, they would have sideswiped us. Now, the reason you get when you get the minor is because you didn't really slow them down. But when you came to this junction, Torin, you stopped about two and a half feet away from the giveaway lines. And you could only see two bus lengths to your right. You know when it's a closed junction like this, you should be getting up to the white lines and stopping with that road in first gear. Um, very lucky here, Torrin. When I seen this, I thought, oh, this doesn't look good. I thought, oh, dodgy. Minor fault number four, Torrin, you don't look over your shoulder. Had there been somebody there, like a pedestrian or cyclist or another vehicle, then you would have recorded a serious fault. Very lucky, young man, very lucky. Minor fault number five, Turin, you swing wide as you go around this corner. Yeah, I think your speed was a little bit on the fast side, but I still felt you could have got it around quite easy if you'd put your eyes towards the curb instead of looking, I don't know, at the centre of the road or looking up the road, but you definitely weren't looking where the car wanted to go. And you could you pull up just after that red car? Burgundy car on the left hand side. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let me just go a little bit further forward. That'll do. Stop there. Manoeuvre time. What I'd like you to do is to pull up alongside this van and reverse it back into a palm position. Try to do it within two car lengths and clue your own. Have you any questions? No. Nope. Oh, Minor fault number six, Torin. You don't look over your shoulder again. One more of those and it's become an habitual fault and you'll get a serious fault for it. You need to check over your shoulder in that blind spot area. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, well done with this touring. Um, I've seen a lot of people where really he just buckled under the pressure here with the cars and that coming. Now, had you not stopped for the cars, most people wouldn't have, and they would have got a serious fall for that. But you kept your observations up and you stopped for the car. Um, Agnes is out of two or three inches, we're not going to mark that. But yeah, well done with this. So good stuff, young man, good stuff. Thank you. Try it on when you're ready. End of the road to turn right. Serious fault number one for you, Torin. Oh. Torin, you are one lucky young lad here. Um, Torin, you can't see to the right, so you've stopped at the junction. Well done. Now what you need to do is lean that top half of your body forward and work your six pack and then pinch a couple of inches, pinch an inch. Um, what you do is you just pull out and there's a car coming from your right. You can't even see. Um, luckily for you, the, the weather give us a right dirty look. They weren't going that fast, but you caused them to slow down. I don't know what you were thinking here, Torrin. I really don't because I've not seen this on your driving lessons. Fault number seven for you, Torin. You should be carrying out the mirror signal manoeuvre routine approaching these traffic lights. Serious fault number two for you, Torin. Oh. Torin, it doesn't look so bad on video, but you were on top of these give way lines before you actually look to the right. You must have seen the pedestrian crossing on green and thought you could drive straight round. You're very lucky there's nothing coming from your right or I would have had to jump on these jewels and take physical action. Durham City Centre. Right. Some slight hesitation here. If you look to the right, can you see these two white cars here? Torrin, why don't you drive onto the roundabout? You learners are all the same. If you can tell me, explain why you just want to stop for, you have my full attention. I'm baffled. I had a pupil fail at this roundabout. She came to the roundabout. There was a car, the first white car, drove off the roundabout. My pupil didn't go. Second car drove off the roundabout, my people didn't go. Third car drove off the roundabout, my people didn't go. And he just said, well, bugger this and give her a serious fault for undue hesitation. So if you look at this picture, Torin, you should be driving straight onto that roundabout because them two cars are not coming from your right. They're coming from the exit before, which means they're going off to the next exit. Now, you could argue that what happens if they come round this way? Well, by the time you... They come round. You're going to be on. You're going to be wearing gun. You're going to be on the roundabout. Some some slight hesitation, but I, I'm not going to mark this. But you as learners should be driving out on the roundabouts when you see cars like this. But you never do. Serious 
serious fault number three for you, Torrin. Oh. Torrin, you, you put the signal on to turn right. Well done, I would have just left it on, but you don't indicate right at the roundabout. And there's quite a bit of traffic on the roundabout, so you're getting a serious fault for this. I've had pupils fail for this, but I've also had pupils pass because there was nothing on the roundabout. You need to confirm and tell other road users what you plan to do with roundabouts so they can plan their journey. Fault number four for you, Torin. Oh. Torin, you straight line this roundabout. You're in the left lane, but then you go straight over to the right lane. Your, your speed on approach is a little bit fast. Now, the reason was a little bit fast. You had this clutch down on approach. This clutch should have been up to the driving point on approach. The roundabout helps control the speed of the car. But you need to put your eyes to the left and follow that left wheel round. You're looking straight ahead and that's why we're straight line roundabouts, young man. Shame on you. I'll direct you back from here. So with the next roundabout will turn and right. Turning right. Serious fault number five for you, Torin. Oh. Torin, when the driving examiner asks you to change lanes, get it done ASAP. I know there's a few cars there, but what I would have done is when I should have turned right, you should have been clocking that dormer. Once the car on your on your right lane is level with you, put the signal on and watch for the other cars letting you go move into the right lane. You leave it very late to move over. This picture does not do it justice. Torrin, you were inches away from this car when you were changing lanes. I thought your front end was going to clip this BMW on the right hand side. It was far too close. Too close. Turn it right, you need the right lane. Minor fault number eight, Torin, there's no signal for turning right at this roundabout. Um, it's only mine because it's all light control. It doesn't matter so much, but I'll be still putting this indicator on if I was on my driving test. <laughs> it's a year 177 we're looking for. Minor fault number nine, Torrin. Torrin, how can you miss that E177? It's as clear as daylight, it's straight in front of you. Now, what you do is you come round in the one for clear in the lane for clear path and you take the exit for clear path, which the exam will be over the moon with because you've you've gone the wrong way, but you've done it all safely. So that's great. The only thing you'll not be happy with is um going the wrong way you've took them right off route now so you probably direct you back to the test center um maybe spitting feathers with this one but because you've done it on all safely don't worry about it i've given you the minor fall for response to road markings um now most learners here when they come round, i've seen that you had clocked the a177 most learners would have just cut across there and failed without any mirror checks but you've just gone for clear path so 
well done with that. straight ahead of the roundabout at the roundabout turn right it's the fourth exit for the year 16 fourth exit turn right fourth exit Serious fault number six for you, Torren. Probably should have been a dangerous is. Oh. Torren, I'm not sure whether my balls were here, but they were definitely in the wrong place. Now, you've, you've, I've had to break here because I thought you were going to crash into the car. I think you might have gotten away with it without it being a dangerous, because I think you probably would have stopped, but you would have been inches away from this car. Now, I have had pupils um, turn around and say to my see at the examiner and um, when the examiners have dueled my pupil the examiners the pupil said well i was going to break and the examiner turned around and said son when i break it's last resort you should have been breaking a couple of car lengths earlier so turin just got to put this down your eyeballs mate look in the wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> Minor fault number 10, Torrin goes down to stall and Torrin, I knew this fault was coming because every time you were moving off, when you had the handbrake on, you were bringing the clutch up to the driving point while the car shaking. Can't tell so much on video. There's no need to do that turn on the level. You've got two options. Just take the handbrake off and go gas clutch because you're not going to roll backwards or say you gas and find your bite. The biting point is not the driving point. The biting point is when you hear the tone of the engine drop. Luckily we didn't get re-rendered. I honestly thought this van driver was going in the backwards. That's why it's squeal like a big girl's blouse. And one other thing, Torrin, will you lease that parking brake properly? Pull it up slightly, then push the button in. Don't push the button in first so it clicks. Gets on the examiner's nerves, that one. Serious fault number seven for you, Torren. Oh, turn! I think the head's gone now. Um, I said turn right, fourth exit for the year 690. It's straight in front of you. Um, even if you wanted to go to the right lane, turn, you just, even the examiner wanted you to go, you just wouldn't go that way. You've just followed this lane you're in, then filter back to the left lane. Um, the year 690 is straight in front of you. Now, what you do is you cut across that right lane, which is dangerous if there'd been a motorbike there. Or anything but you go across without any mirror checks Torrin you should have just gone straight ahead here and I don't know what you're doing I really don't I enjoy editing these videos Torrin but watching this and editing this has been really painful damn you've got some work to do just keep going back around the roundabout just go around to the right right lane right. just go back around Oh, 
with the newer models like ES690. with the road markings for A690. Serious fault number 8 for you, Torren. Oh. Torren is one skill I like my learners to be really Top notch at and it's lane changing. Um, I think it's the second top reason in the country why pupils fail the driving test use of mirrors changing direction. To pass your driving test turn, you've got to be really good at this skill. Now, we've done plenty of this, so you should know how to do it. But you're in the right lane, you've come back to the left with no mirror checks. There could have been anything undertaken you, like a motorbike, a car. Even the cyclists, for that matter, I've seen them fly down here, but no mirror checks, Torrin. Very, very disappointing. Serious fault number nine for you, Torin. Oh. Torin, when you come round this corner, you should have been looking at the gap between this car that's parked on your left. Um, you must have been looking right up the road because you were inches away from this um, parked car on the left. Uh, you were doing about, I think, about 20 miles an hour, 16, 17, 18 miles an hour. And you were inches. I've heard the examiners were cracking down on this one, but far too close to this park car turn. Now, you know the guidelines a couple of feet, 20 miles an hour, one foot 10. You're about one or two inches off this dome. I actually thought you were going to hit it. I was ready just to push that wheel away. But your eyes are in the wrong place again, young man. Minor fault number 11, Torin. This could have been so easy, your 10th series fault. Now what happens is you turn right, you slow down to stop because of the oncoming car, but you don't enter the hatch markings. Now you stop the car and then all then what happens is a car flashes the headlights at you and you react to this, so well done, you go around. Had the car not flashed the headlights at you, you would have been stopping there and you would have been holding the traffic up behind. So I had a pupil filler here the other month, Shreya. She turned right here and she done exactly what you done. She stopped because of the oncoming traffic, but she was stopped for a few uh, minute or so and holding all the traffic up behind. You've getting away with it because the car in front flashed the lights at you. Had it not flashed, then this would have been your 10th series fault. <laughs> Dude, tell me about that. Wow. Just them feet. Um, I don't think, it off. think it went very well. What? I don't think it went very well. Tell them when you've got your test. 
9th of September. 9th of September, he's going away for two weeks now. Do you me? Do you want the truth? Yeah, go on. It's one of the worst ones I've seen. Really? Yeah, really bad. Really bad. Dude, right. First serious fold. Um, we'll get some driving lessons in in South Africa. First one. That junction back there. Couldn't see probably what should you have done. Pinched out. Pinched an inch degree. What did you do? Drove straight out. What happened? Had to stop. Now what you should have done, what should you have done with your top half of your body? I leaned forward. Yeah, you just should have leaned right forward. Second one. Um, traffic lights and levels cross. You were turning left. What's that mean? Does You've that got mean? a stop look. You've got, what did you do? Just went forward. When, when did you look? After it. Yeah, when you, the observations were very, very late. Um, next one, um, this roundabout here, you're turning right, fourth exit. What should you put on? Signal. Did you signal? No. Next one. Come to roundabout, straight ahead, second exit. How would you go round a roundabout? What did you do? Uh -huh. Yeah, straight lined it. Yeah. Next one. Oh, this was bad. You know when I said the turn right for you, 177. Can you remember? You were moving over when there was a car there, look. Yeah. It was really close. That was scary, that. Um, now, when you're asked to turn right, you should have moved into right lane straight away. If you can't move in, wait till they get level, put the signal on, wait till they're about there. Yeah. Agree? Next one. Oh, explain this one. Um, stop behind the car. Blue car, can you remember the traffic lights? Mm -hmm. What happened there? Break too late. Yeah, I had to break. Now, when I break, it's last resort. Next one. Um, oh, I've got a picture of the roundabout, actually. Right, I guess you do. Um, can you remember when you went the wrong way? Yep. Nothing wrong with that. And I said, follow the signs for year six, Lord Markins for year 690. Um, you were here. You're in this lane. Mm -hmm. What does that say? Year 690. What did you do? Went into the other lane. No, it's actually just cut across you. Even if I want you to go there, you couldn't. You just go that way. Um, next one, you know, when you went down the city centre? Mm -hmm. You were in the right lane. Where, where should you have looked before moving back to the left? Left over. There was no mirror checks whatsoever. <coughs> Do you know Potter's Bank? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it is. You drove right, you turned left there. Um, there were some cars parked here like that. You went round the corner, and you were inches away from the from the dormer. Inches. I was ready just to grab that wheel. You were that. You were inches away from it. There's no need to get that close. You should have been moving over. Yeah. Go on. We haven't got time. Dear me.